if I'm fighting in the jungle, I want something different than if I'm fighting in Alaska or if I'm fighting in Iraq or Afghanistan. This is a product of fighting in, in the Middle East. They were going to FOBs, refitting, and they were going out to fight. So you only had to worry about carrying the stuff you needed to fight, right? But now, especially in the jungle environment, we don't have that luxury and you have to sustain yourself and move long distances and then continue to fight. The purpose I think of this is to kind of bridge that gap between sustainability and fighting. I'm first lieutenant Zachary Calderon. I'm first platoon platoon leader. I'm Charlie Rock, Cacti, and I'm about to introduce you guys to the uh, jungle rig that I'm testing out, optimized for uh, jungle operations. So obviously we're not in a jungle environment right now. We're in currently in Pahukalua training area, otherwise known as PTA or the, the big island of Hawaii. But this rig is applicable for not just a jungle environment, but basically any environment we fight in. Okay. So from, from top to bottom, you have the harness itself, which is made of super lightweight material. Same thing with these straps. Um, like I said, six point adjustable harness, drop extenders, you know, when you need to put your rock on. Something I really like about it is you can take all these clips off too. So like these clips right here, I could take all these clips off and I can just make it a, a belt. Overall, like the theme is like modularity and uh, customization. And that's, I think, super important. Um, Cause like I said, you never know which environment you're gonna fight in. Like a couple of days ago, we were in the jungle in Oahu and now we're on the big island and basically, you know, an open desert, I guess. And again, left to right, double mag pouches. Generally put mags in there. They have these bungee corsets to kind of tighten it down. So I, if I want to use a flaps, I can use a flaps. If I don't want to use a flaps, it's got a, you know, a bungee stay right here. It's just a tourniquet on the outside that I have ready to go. Um, again, my adjustable nod pouch. You could fit like a one liter Nalgene in there and a, and a one liter Nalgene water bottle. Um, and then I have my giant sustainment pouch. Again, it's like a, a status card, laminated status card, signaling, IR chem lights. Um, my leader's book with a little tie down strap. My leader's book, it's basically just a notebook that I use to plan. Um, in my notebook, I have some um, what's called bump cards for um, helicopters, for air assaulting or anything like that. And these are used just to basically tell, you know, have the serials for all my um, sensitive items and whatnot. And then I have some protractors, map markers, and then I have uh, some overlays, some map overlays. So generally when we plan, uh, I don't write on the map ever. I'll just write on these overlays and then I'll put that over top of my map and kind of have like my, you know, mission graphics on these instead of my map itself. We bought, as a battalion, we bought some stuff from this company, Esotech, um, included like 249 pouches, dump pouches, slings, just various various different things. And uh, one of the guys that works up at S4, one of the lieutenants up there, which is like the logistics cell of our battalion, he reached out to the CEO, CEO got back to him and, and uh, wanted to build some like jungle specific rigs and equipment. My buddy, buddy Chris, who's up at the S4, he hit me up and was like, hey, you know, would you mind testing this out with your platoon? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do that, you know? I took my platoon out. We all went out and did like a quick um, ambush and kind of started that relationship. And then uh, since then, we've just been going back and forth um, with, with gear and uh, testing different things out. Have my map, nothing fancy. I usually just put in a Ziploc bag. Um, and this, this map is just currently all of our AO that we're operating in right now. And then I've got face paint, because you need face paint. Uh, VS-17 signaling panel. Yeah, so that's basically everything in my sustainment pouch. So I'm moving over, I have my IFAC. It's a rip top, rip open top. This particular one isn't Esotech, but it's the same exact design, or pretty, pretty close to the design that he has. Got some gauze here more gauze, or I got some bandages, gauze, tape, chest seals, some combat gauze, an Israeli pressure bandage, um, and some, some NPAs. I usually, I like to keep my uh, tourniquets on the outside, that's why I have it right here, just so I can have like super easy access. Have the canteen pouch, the adjustable canteen pouch. I made this uh, bungee 
like corset go around it so it cinched down to my radio and then rounded it out just two more two more mags so i had the capacity to carry eight mags total and as a pl or a platoon leader like i don't need i, I don't need eight magazines so i usually just dish those out to my guys if i'm fighting in the jungle i want something different than if I'm fighting in Alaska or if I'm fighting in Iraq or Afghanistan. We have Sergeant Leota, one of the most badass NCOs in Charlie Rock and uh, honestly the battalion really. Um, he's rocking the standard issued TAPS, you know what TAPS? Tactical Assault Panel uh, that pretty much most of the army has issued. So there's six dedicated mag pouches built into it, um, all Velcro. And then there's two at the very end, which are meant for radios or more magazines, if you want. It's got Molly row, uh, three three level three uh, rows of Molly on the front of it. Um, he's got the standard IFAC upside down, so it's a lot easier to access for him or anyone else who needs to use it. Um, this pouch is actually one of the Esotech pouches, the adjustable ones he's rocking. It's got like a split Y harness on the back of it. So three buckles here and then a fixed buckle here. Uh, he's also rocking a, a gun belt. And most of our dudes are wearing gun belts, but none of those are, are issued, unfortunately. On his gun belt, he has most of his mags. Standard issue double mag pouches, Velcro, um, a dump pouch for magazines or anything he finds in the battlefield that he's, he deemed is like important for, for, uh, for Intel. And then this is the standard issued canteen pouch he's got here. Most dudes rock their uh, night vision devices in the in the pouches. Um, and that's pretty much it. The big difference is the level of outflow you have for, for air, right? So or for heat to escape, right? So on this, all the heat's like trapped right here, especially when he's got it fully loaded down with, you know, uh, full combat load, right? Whereas me, like I have nothing here, so. All the weight is uh, pretty much on his shoulders, right? And for me, it's the same way. My weight's on my shoulders, but I can easily adjust this to sit at my waist um, when I'm not wearing a rucksack or whatever it is. As far as ease of access goes, uh, I have eight mags right here, basically right here on, the, on my front left and right. Super easy access, no matter what hand. Um, I can carry a lot more on this and still move faster. You have a lot more points of adjustment. So I can like tailor this, since I said six points of adjustment, I can tailor this to, you know, to whatever I'm doing, right? With this, once you adjust it, and I correct me if I'm wrong, uh, most guys just like, once they adjust it, it stays that way because it's, it's a pain to like readjust, right? With this, the cool thing about it is like, I have these extenders, so I adjust it to sit the way I want it to um, when I'm fighting. You know, when I just have this rig on and not like a rucksack or something. And then when I'm rucking, all I have to do is hit these adjustments and you know, I'm good to go. It's like a quick adjust kind of thing. This is an evolution of itself. So before this, you had the flick, the fighting, uh, fighting load carrier, I believe. And it was basically just a vest. And that had even less ability to adapt, right? This is a product of fighting in, in the Middle East is because they were fighting, they were going to fobs, refitting, and they were going out to fight. So you only had to worry about carrying um, you know, stuff you needed to fight, right? But now, especially in the jungle environment, we don't have that luxury where we're operating out of fobs and we have you know strong support from, from battalion or brigade or whatever it is, and you have to sustain yourself and move long distances and then continue to fight, right? So this, the purpose I think of this is to kind of bridge that gap between sustainability and fighting. And um, I think with this, you don't really you don't really get that um, as much. It's good for what it was meant to do. Um, you can take you can detach this these two straps and you can hook into a plate carrier. Um, but then again, you, like I said, you're just carrying more weight and you have to modify your rig again, whereas opposed to this, you can just, if you wanted to throw your play carrier on and you're good to go, you're good to fight. Um, you have everything right here. So I think this is a step in the, the right direction, honestly, in, in terms of the jungle environment. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I like it a lot in the jungle environment. Um, I've noticed uh, when I'm actually moving, maneuvering through the jungle, I. I don't sweat nearly as much as I did with uh, my old rig and my gun belt. Um, and with this thing, I can kind of kind of do it all, you know? I can su super easy take off, rip this off, 
half times I don't even need to wear this this is just for to keep it kind of close together and then unbuckle this and I can just don and off it's super easy so I mean that's something um, also I didn't really talk about earlier but um, if I'm doing like uh, combat water survival stuff I mean this thing is incredibly easy to take off it's just one one belt buckle away you know swim out of it and I'm, I'm out of my out of my rig so if there's gear out there you know that that allows guys and girls to move faster move longer distances then why not yeah i think overall i think it's good for a really good step in the right direction for uh, uh jungle operations